ஓம ஜானத்திமிரந்தய ஜானாஞ்சனிஷலாகாய சக்ஷூருன்மிலிதம் ஏனா தஸ்மை ஸ்ரீ குருவே நம Thank you very much for joining today for this Gita ki versus course. It has been a long journey we have been on. And, to, and now most of the sessions from here onwards will be more applicational. We have discussed most of the concepts, important concepts from the Gita. We will of course be introducing new concepts throughout. But the focus will be more on uh applicational subjects than conceptual subjects so today i'll be talking about beyond black and white conceptions of spirituality so i'll talk about is spirituality digital or analog then we'll talk about adjusting versus compromising and then we how to balance between the two through purposefulness so there are four verses which are going to be the center of our discussion 12 9 to 12 a 8 to 12 11 and 12 also but primary 12 11 so I've chosen one of them over here abhyase pe asamartho si mat karma paramo bhava madartham api karmani kurvan siddhim avapsisi krishna is saying abhyase abhyasa is systematic practice so if you are unable to do that systematic practice of sadhana asamarthosi if you find that you can't do it mat karma paramo bhava then you work making me your ultimate purpose work for me as prabhu pat translates it mat artham api karmani by working for me kurvan siddhim avapsisi you will attain perfection by that so what does this mean that this means that krishna is giving multiple options with the 12 this was 12 10 if it's a 12 8 was constantly fix your mind and intelligence on me in this way you will live with me live in me in fact 12 9 is if you can't fix your mind conscience uh, constantly then fix it with effort try to fix it on me if it's not doesn't happen if it goes off bring it back if you can't fix your mind on me at all then at least externally engage in my service And the next verse will say that if you can't do that also, then at least work for some good cause. So Krishna is giving multiple options over here at which we can connect with Him. So now when you talk about uh, digital or analog, what do we exactly mean over here? The digital is the idea that uh, digital has usually only two states: one or zero. So spirituality as digital means that we are either in Krishna or in Maya. If we are doing this, we are Krishna conscious. If we are doing this, we are not Krishna conscious. Either we are in spiritual consciousness or in material consciousness. Now, that is at one level true. Yes, there is spiritual consciousness. There is material consciousness. Uh, at the same time, because we live in the material world, our spiritual consciousness. is mediated through the world of matter so what do i mean by mediated through the world of matter so if we are going to a, even if you are going to something like a temple now the temple is in a particular city and we may be in the temple we may maybe be holding the deities or taking in the temple atmosphere but that is in a particular city so we are going to notice the kind of people who are around us so on the other hand we might go to a place like vrindavan there also we are experiencing krishna but vrindavan is also at a it is not a techni- it is from a spiritual perspective not in the material world but it is also at a particular geographical place in the world and we are going to mediate spirit we access spirit through matter so some people will be affected quite a lot by that by the matter through which they are experiencing the spirit some people will not be affected that much so for some people the say the whole indian culture seems very exotic and then that could be positive that could enhance the spiritual experience or that could distract them also or oh, they get caught in experiencing so many other things that they don't experience krishna so much on the other hand for some people western culture might seem uh, now indian and western themselves are very broad generalizations because there is so much 
variation within what we call as indian culture or what we call as western culture also but some people might find it that to be very new and exotic and for some people that might be what distracts or some people okay this is this is how it is normally and uh, we focus on sp- on the spiritual so the point is that uh, say when we are say this we always access spirit through matter so when we hear someone speak say if we are hearing someone who is speaking through a very uh, thickly accented speech then we are hearing a spiritual message but we will have to process the accent and somebody who doesn't have an unfamiliar familiar accent that might help us process it better but who knows somebody who has an unfamiliar accent hearing them might as give a feeling oh this is something far out this is something special so that might attract them more so the point we are making over here is that spirit is always accessed in the material world through some material medium and that material medium how much it affects our consciousness that will vary from person to person so that's why matter itself is uh, we are at each moment in material consciousness and spiritual consciousness which is true but it's not that simple because our spiritual consciousness is ma- mediated through matter and sometimes the matter's influence becomes a lot more than the spirit's influence and sometimes the matter's influence becomes minimal so to say that somebody is in spiritual consciousness well we are never unless we are extremely pure we are never entirely in 100% spiritual consciousness say for example somebody is a very good singer and then they are doing kirtan so then how much are we relishing the sound of the holy name and how much are we relishing the the voice of that person now we may say that person is also a devotee okay they are devotee but what if somebody else is not a devotee and their voice is not that great but they are also singing krishna's name so then are we if we are relishing somebody who is a good singer more than somebody who is not a good singer then how much of that relish is spiritual and how much of that is material these are very difficult questions to answer now it could be that the good singing can enhance our absorption in what is being sung or sometimes that good singing can get us absorbed in the voice rather than what is spoken with that voice conversely for some people a uh, not so good voice may make them make them so distracted this that they they can't absorb in transcendence some for some people a not so good voice means okay there's nothing uh, nothing special about the voice let me focus on what is the content of the voice so the point uh, so the point here is that if can we even separate that that this is material and this is spiritual we don't know or if we consider dt is only the earlier example that when the dt is addressed in a particular way some dresses we may like more than others or some darshans we may like more than others now is it because we like we ourselves like certain colors anywhere ways where we see them and when we see those colors dt is dressed in those colors we like them so then are we appreciating that as a spiritual attraction or is it a material attraction directed in a spiritual way it's difficult to know so rather than seeing that there is like a black and white separation this is material consciousness this is spiritual consciousness yes there are certain things you are definitely in material consciousness say if somebody is uh, is huh. and is is enjoying some something purely something entirely sensual then we could say that is material consciousness but uh, so on the other hand somebody is so somebody is looking at something sensual and seeking sensual pleasure through that then that is material consciousness and somebody is looking at something spiritual with spiritual intention then that is spiritual consciousness so there is the there is the content of the consciousness and there is the intent of the consciousness or the interest of the intent means what is what are we interested in so spirit so what is spiritual consciousness what is material consciousness is very difficult to dissect at all situations and on many times it may not be necessary to dissect 
because after all we are individuals and we are individually becoming attracted toward krishna so so is spirituality digital well it's not that simple then is spirituality analog well in some ways yes because even when we say there is spiritual and material this the material is also diverse apart from what i said about you now our own interests uh, shaping our absorption then there are three modes in material nature and we will be discussing about the modes in the 14th chapter uh, when we come to that but beyond that there is the there is the principle of goodness passion and ignorance and broadly we could say goodness is pro spiritual passion is non spiritual ignorance is anti spiritual now again these are generalizations so sometimes something in passion might also be anti spiritual or for somebody in particular situations something that might seem to be in passion might be pro spiritual so what does it mean that for some people they can work the best when they are working on tight deadline driven projects so even services when there's a deadline to get this done in this much time or meet this target meet this goal that's when they are most absorbed well they are absorbed in krishna they are absorbed in the service of krishna but are they absorbed in remembering krishna or are they absorbed simply in seeking that goal well we don't know and do we really need to bother about these things well at one level we do need to but uh, 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 but another level well first things first the first thing is fix the mind on krishna yena kena prakarena manah krishna niveshayate somehow or the other fix the mind on krishna so now till now i have talked in terms of consciousness itself that that consciousness can itself be material or spiritual uh, sorry sorry that our consciousness when it is material and when it is spiritual that itself is not simply black and white there can be various levels at which something is material something is spiritual and we need to carefully analyze before making a quick judgment about things then what to speak of certain not just levels of consciousness but levels of practice so levels of practice means that what if somebody is practicing at a particular level somebody else is practicing at another level so there could be different levels at which different people practice spirituality and they all are moving toward krishna but at different levels so that is what krishna is offering in this uh, multiple levels of connecting with him is what krishna offers from 12:8 to 12:12 and this gels with the overall approach towards spirituality that the bhagavad gita offers so what the gita offers us is user friendly spirituality what do you mean you know user friendly spirituality you could say from your place at your pace access krishna's grace so from your place at your pace access krishna's grace so this is actually the mood not just within the practice of bhakti but within within all practice in general all kind of spiritual practice or even material practice that is conducive to spirituality krishna has this very inclusive statement in 411 where he says mama vartamanu vartante manushya partha sarvashah he says all people are on my path and then the first half of that verse is yetha mam prapadyante tam sathaiva bhajamya ham and as all people surrender unto me i reward them accordingly what this means is that all people are on my path uh, but depending on how much they are connected with me i reward i reveal myself to them accordingly so this is very different from if we want to say digital spiritual digital spirituality we could say some some traditions have the idea that this is the only way if you are following this way then you are on the right path otherwise you are on the wrong path so that is black and white but here we recognize that what the bhagavad gita is offering is not that simple it's not just simply black and white there is a lot more going on over here that needs to be considered carefully so uh, now why does the bhagavad gita offer it like that 
because the not everyone can access spirituality at the same level because different people are at different levels and they need to begin from where they are at and they can also move up at different pace so in one of our earlier sessions we talked about spirituality like climbing up a mountain and the spiritual journey is like going from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain now if we try to climb up a mountain whether it is for trekking or even it is for going for some going through some holy place like say tirupati which is on top of a hill then um, there are multiple factors like with respect to going up that there could be many ways some people can just climb up through the normal natural path somebody people people might climb up through steps somebody might go up by a ramp somebody might take a take a bicycle some people some people might take a bike some people might take a car some people might take a uh, take a helicopter now now all these are ways for going up but even if somebody is say going up imagine now with respect to spiritual this spirituality different people are already at different heights on the mountain and then the different people may also go up at different pace so they not only are at their different places but some people can go up very fast some people might go up slower and now the idea is everybody needs to be included everybody needs to be allowed to go up if you offer them this is the pace at which you need to go and if you are not going at this pace then get out of here that's not krishna's mood at all in the bhagavad gita so what krishna offers us is user friendly spirituality so user friendly spirituality means we we understand we accept that there are there is a digital sense to spirituality in the sense that yes there is we could say sensual consciousness and there is spiritual consciousness and there are there is we could say a polarity there could be a graph on which one extreme is sensual consciousness one extreme is spiritual consciousness but at a particular moment Now we may not be solely in sensual consciousness or solely in spiritual consciousness. There might be a lot of variations in the kind of consciousness we are in, and we might be comfortable at a particular level as we try to move higher on that journey. And we need to acknowledge that and move forward. So I already mentioned these various levels of bhakti which Krishna has talked about. Spontaneously absorb the mind in Krishna. That was twelve eight. That my eva mana adhatsva my buddhim neveshaya. This we could say is pure devotion, where if the mind and intelligence are absorbed in Krishna, Krishna is saying not only will you come to me, but you are already living in me. Then there is conscientious absorption in Krishna. So when there is conscientious or conscientious concentration on Krishna, then that means. One is making an effort. The mind goes off here and there. But atachittam samadhatum na shakno si mai steram abhyas yogi na tato mamichhaptum dhan anjaya. That's what Krishna is talking about over here in twelve nine, and then we discuss twelve ten. Okay, even if your mind doesn't fix on Krishna, then at least work for Krishna. So, for example, if we consider, some people might say that. Um, no i can't do all this chanting of rounds and i can't do all this but i will st- i will i'll come to the temple i'll do some seva okay that's also good we need to accept those people also they are also on the progress of spiritual path and and then krishna is even saying that if somebody is working for some good cause that also is good that will also keep them spiritually connected so working for some good cause now what do we mean by a good cause it might be somebody does some kind of social humanitarian work somebody works for the betterment of one's community one's country anything bigger than oneself anything where one is concerned about helping others and that is also progressive toward spiritual consciousness now to understand this this last level especially Twelve, uh, eleven. We may say there's nothing Krishna conscious in it. Well, uh, sometimes we may say, okay, if you're just feeding hungry people, or you are, say, maybe providing 
clothes or some other needs to people that is just mundane charity that is not spiritual well okay not so simple why because if we consider the broadening of consciousness mm -hmm. so there are two aspects to the broadening of consciousness there is the expansion of consciousness and then there is the elevation of consciousness so expansion of consciousness means that i think of more and more realities at the level that i am at so somebody might be in material consciousness but they think only okay what is the, how can i get the best food to eat and everyone else no who cares for them if they get it that's their luck but i want to eat as well as i can but if somebody's consciousness expanded so they might have nothing spiritual in their consciousness but they still think okay you know we have got this uh, we have got this uh, cakes but there are 20 people over here and there are 20 cakes probably that means you know everybody should take one although i have come before and i can take five if i want and nobody may notice who's taken five there's no webcam there's no camera over here but maybe i shouldn't do that and maybe i should give it or maybe i should uh, share equally but somebody is thinking of others that's expansion of consciousness and that's desirable so expansion means at what whatever level one is at one thinks of bigger and bigger realities so for example we can say environmental consciousness that is expansion of consciousness there is even national consciousness that could be expansion of consciousness so one is thinking of one's country so if i do this you know i say if i do this this will benefit me if i do this that will benefit benefit um, not just me but it will benefit my country also so if say for example uh, i want to do something which benefits not only me but also benefits others if that's a option say for example um, we are buying something but while buying something if we can buy in such a way that 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 also gives support some charity maybe that's not a bad thing we can do that so thinking about like that thinking about things like that is expansion of consciousness and then there is elevation of consciousness elevation means that one starts thinking about higher realities so expansion of consciousness could mean that say if there are starving people you know it's not just i am starving others also starving let's i have to be concerned about their hunger also elevation of consciousness may mean that you know okay people are not just physical creatures okay i need to if i can help them they address their uh, physical needs that's fine but what about their emotional needs what about their spiritual needs i think about higher realities and spirituality can also be understood at various levels so we could say that the elevation of consciousness will lead to absorption in krishna hmm. more and more absorption in krishna so the first three verses 12 8 9 and 10 krishna is talking about increasingly elevated levels or we could say from the 8 to 9 uh, elevation at various levels from the highest to the intermediate hmm. now in the 11th verse krishna is talking about expansion of consciousness and even if there is not elevation at least let there be expansion now the 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 best broadening of consciousness is where there is both elevation and expansion now sometimes some people may have elevated consciousness but they may not have expanded consciousness now elevated consciousness means you know, they may think about krishna uh, and they may be attracted toward krishna but still they may be somewhat narrow minded in their approach towards say other paths this this is just the right way to do things and that's not the right way to do things well okay okay so now they may be elevated in their consciousness and we don't have to deny that they are elevated but that doesn't necessarily mean they are they are they are they have having expanded consciousness so the best the most the best way to develop is both elevated and expanded so krishna is acknowledging this that elevation of consciousness at various levels is desirable and uh, if not if no elevation is possible at least the expansion of consciousness is possible is desirable so now that's why we have to consider a matter of perspective over here what do i mean by it's a matter of perspective 
that you no know, good is better than bad but it is worse than the best uh, but we don't we don't have to equate good with the bad we don't have to demonize the bad good also what do i mean by all this that say if somebody has environmental consciousness but they don't have any spiritual consciousness and they think because i'm environmental activist i don't have to do anything spiritual well maybe not so simple so we could say that just there is self centered consciousness there is environmental consciousness there is spiritual consciousness so as compared to self centered consciousness somebody has environmental consciousness their consciousness is expanded and that is good so self centered consciousness if we consider it to be bad environmental consciousness is good humanitarian consciousness is good mm. national consciousness by national consciousness i'm not talking of national in terms of nationalistic where my nation is better than your nation and i want to destroy your nation but simply a greater sense of connection and belonging that i want not only myself to progress uh, but i want my nation to progress also so i'm talking about in more in a uh, more in a compassion more in a inclusive sense rather than a competitive or a, a domineering sense so but humanitarian consciousness if we say so humanitarian consciousness is better than self centered consciousness so now of course we could say spiritual consciousness or one is absorbed in krishna and is thinking of uh, how to connect everyone with krishna that is the best yes so we could say the best is better than good and the good is better than bad so there is uh, self centered consciousness humanitarian consciousness and spiritual consciousness now from one perspective anything sort of spiritual consciousness is inadequate but at the same time that doesn't mean humanitarian humanitarian consciousness and self centered consciousness are the same thing no there is a big difference between the two so we can't equate the good and the bad thing it is all material yes it may be material but there can there can be materially constructed consciousness there can be materially expanded consciousness and materially expanded consciousness um is better than materially constructed consciousness so we can't equate the good and bad and nor should we demonize the bad sorry demonize the good oh this is simply mundane well it's mundane it might be mundane but still it is expanded consciousness it's uh, not just from the point of your social contribution that person is doing something laudable but even in terms of their own consciousness the expansiveness of their consciousness is something which is healthy for their eventual spiritual elevation so somebody who already has expanded consciousness maybe somebody who is say already an activist somebody who is maybe working for say, um, removing poverty removing illiteracy removing uh, rem removing say environmental degradation that's the concern that they already have and then they see how spirituality can address the problems at a more holistic fundamental transformational level then when they become spiritual they will approach spirituality also from a much broader perspective and their impact may well be much larger so krishna is acknowledging these subtleties over here so black and white consciousness black and white conceptions of spirituality are very in that sense narrow minded we need to oh, we need to recognize that consciousness needs to be both expanded and elevated so now when we talk about spiritual growth the essential spiritual growth consciousness expanded consciousness that is a journey from self centeredness to selflessness so now selflessness can be at the horizontal level when it is i am selfless for others now others could simply be one's family now we may say isn't that simply extended selfishness yes it is at one level but if we consider now in today's world where even Uh, the basic family structure leave alone a joint family but even the nuclear family structure is collapsing then people are people are we could say sinking into the black hole of self centeredness where a person doesn't take any responsibility for anything other than one's own pleasure then even the consciousness expanded to the level of one's own family may be better than a simply self centered consciousness so a person say who con who is concerned about caring for their family caring for their children that person might be better than somebody who just playing video games or somebody just surfing on facebook and doing nothing more with their lives so 
there is the expanded consciousness now selflessness can be at the horizontal level uh, toward more and more people and selflessness can also go toward the spiritual level to vertical level toward krishna so spiritual growth is about expanding and elevating one's consciousness so now by understanding this idea of expansion and elevation of consciousness now let's move forward and look at adjusting versus compromising what exactly do we mean by this so when krishna is offering multiple levels at which arjuna can connect with him is krishna adjusting or is he compromising well he is adjusting now what, what do we mean by this basically let's in general in spiritual life there are principles and there are details so principles if we change principles but not details that's is that desirable not desirable Mm. So ideally speaking if we consider over here what is desirable is we change the we change the details not the principles that is what would be desirable so what do we mean by here by this that let's look at it from another perspective there are principles which are unchanged there are principles which are changed there are details which are unchanged and details which are changed so <laughs> so if the principles are unchanged and the details are un also unchanged that means people think that becoming spiritual is like turning the clock back so if somebody is so conservative then they may go towards being fanatical so the conservatives are normally concerned with keeping the principles unchanged mm -hmm. the liberals are concerned with making sure that the details are changed so both are required but if along with the principles even the details are not changed then that one will go towards being fanatical on the other hand if in the name of changing details even the principles are changed one will go towards from liberal toward becoming relativistic where there will be nothing left to connect us with the tradition so let's consider this for example say much of the bhakti tradition Uh, the root texts are in sanskrit the ramayana the mahabharat the bhagavad gita they are written in sanskrit so sanskrit is considered to be the say the language of piety the language of spirituality but at the same time in today's world if we just present the sanskrit texts how many people are actually going to learn sanskrit to understand those texts well not many that now if we have a talk in english then what does it mean is are we changing the message no as long as the message is not changed the language can be changed so the language in which we speak is a detail the message that is spoken is a principle now if we see even in india what to speak of the rest of the world even in india the sanskrit texts themselves were not as popular as their vernacularized renditions whether it is in india in maharashtra is in bengal it is in tamil nadu it is andhra you know all say the ramayana mahabharat had their local retellings and those reached the masses much more than the sanskrit texts so the language is a detail the message is the principle so we can't change the principle but if we say we will not we will not change even the um, details so everybody who wants to study they have to learn sanskrit if we started having all the classes in sanskrit what would happen okay we might say that uh, we are maintaining purity but uh, we will not have many people who will come is that what is desired now there is not learning sanskrit if that's the interest of someone that's wonderful do that but that is not the primary thing 
See, when somebody is giving a class, if somebody can quote a lot of Sanskrit verses, we may say that, that oh, this person is very learned. True. But does that mean that they are themselves very realized? Uh, not necessarily. If we consider the classical languages, Greek, Latin, and all the languages that were there at that time, now among all the among the literature that we now have, or at least we have a record that literature was there, you no know, maximum number of books propagating atheism were written in Sanskrit than in any other classical language. We may say, how is that possible? Well, in India, when Buddhism and Jainism arose, they, ro uh, they, they in many ways, were reactions to ritualism and casteism within Hinduism. And in rejecting those ritualistic and casteist aspects, they also some ended up rejecting the idea of a worshipable deity. So Buddhists and Jain philosophers wrote books propagating atheism. And so these are books written in Sanskrit. But what has happened is there's nothing spiritual about those books. In fact, those are seriously critical about spirituality, rejecting the idea of soul, rejecting the idea of God. So there is nothing. Uh, so, so that means that if somebody gets very caught with just the language, well, what about the message? The language is important, but the message is even more important. So same way, <clears throat> we could apply this to every to various areas of life. Now, what is a detail and what is a principle? That is a that is a delicate question, and that needs to be understood carefully. But the principle underlying it is that everybody needs to be provided a facility to connect with Krishna in a way that is accessible for them. So now here I have introduced one more concept that uh, say, I earlier we talked about levels. Now we could say somebody who is spontaneously whose mind is spontaneously attracted toward Krishna and somebody who is conscientiously concentrating their mind on Krishna, somebody is working for Krishna and somebody is working for a, some good cause. These four levels we discussed. Now we could say that these four levels are hierarchical. That being spontaneously absorbed in Krishna is better than striving to conscientiously concentrate the mind on Krishna, which is better than working for Krishna and which is better than working for some good cause. These are hierarchical. But is all variation in spirituality hierarchical? So if somebody is studying spiritual knowledge in Sanskrit, is that better than studying in English? Well, yeah, maybe because they can read the root texts and they can memorize and they can relish. Okay, agreed. But if somebody is speaking in a vernacular, if somebody is studying spirituality in Hindi or Marathi and somebody is studying something in English. So is this hierarchical or is this simply horizontal? This, you are doing it this way and I, I'm learning in this language, you are learning in this language. Well, if it's not the original language of the text, say if it's not Sanskrit or uh, then, then it may well be horizontal. Things are not that simple. So if somebody say eats Indian food offered to Krishna and somebody eats American food offered to Krishna. Now again, Indian and American are very broad generalizations because in Indian also, there are so many different uh, states and cultures and cuisines. So is it that somebody who relishes Indian food offered to Krishna and somebody eats who relishes uh, the American food offered to Krishna? Is one superior or is one inferior? Well, how do you decide that? The important thing is absorb the mind in Krishna. So what is the detail and what is the principle? Broadly, we could say that there are some certain fundamental philosophical tenets which can't be changed. They are essentially to be considered spiritual. So they are considered like Krishna is God, I am a soul. There is, there is no relativization of that. Maybe God exists, God doesn't exist. Maybe there's a soul, maybe there's not a soul. Well, no, that is not something which can be adjusted. So we could say that there are certain details, certain things which are core truths. And there are certain things which are maybe variable in terms of application. So rather than having this black and white understanding, 
that you know every single detail has to be preserved as it is or having a completely relativistic understanding that everything is adjustable everything is up for the grabs we need to recognize that there are some things which are unchangeable and some things are not only changeable it may be very 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 much necessary to change them so shila prabhupad chose to write his books in english he wrote some books in bengali he wrote a, he did whole translation of the bhagavad gita into bengali which is called gitar gaan but when prabhupad came to america he didn't publish gitar gaan that would have been irrelevant in america afterwards devotees they saw the manuscript and they published it and then that's how that rendition bengali rendition of gita is also available so like that now with respect to language we may say it's very easy to understand language is a medium well okay what else is a medium for spirituality and what else is itself spirituality is the food the medium okay then what about the dress is it the medium or is it itself spiritual so with respect to we could say levels of practice there can be hierarchy with respect to tools for practicing or means for practicing maybe it's not hierarchical maybe it's horizontal so i'm not going to get into a get into hair splitting details over here which is hierarchical and which is horizontal let me just focusing on the on the principle that things are not as simple as they might seem at first so there are there are various ways at in which one can be spiritual and there are various levels at which one can be spiritual so levels means i'm talking about hierarchical ways means they they're not hierarchical they are horizontal so the idea is it's it's we need to go beyond black and white conceptions of spirituality and then in the tradition itself there is the word niyamagraha niyamagraha is niyam agraha to not follow the rules at all so that is to reject not only the principles but also not only the details but also the principles the letter and the spirit of the law that will make a person a relativist niya that is niyam agraha and then niyam agraha that means insisting on the letter so much that one doesn't even consider whether the spirit is being followed or not that will make one fanatical so one needs to avoid both these extremes so this is not just some new fangled idea that oh we are adjusting to the adjusting the uh, we are just compromising because uh, we live in a compromised world well okay but we are the material world is always a compromised place deviations then don't just come from the contemporary world deviations can come from within the tradition itself what do we mean by deviations from within the tradition well the caste system in india is itself a classic example of a major and uh, disastrous deviation that came from within the tradition the caste system uh, is the idea that the caste is determined by birth and by birth alone practically so that is not the that is not the intent that is not the standard that is described in scripture there is a deviation and that deviation came from within the tradition uh, so that means by by talking about within the tradition means that we have we cannot be very over simplistic that okay this is how it was done in the past that's how i continue to do it and therefore i won't get deviated well maybe not so simple by doing something simply the way it was done in the past in its entirety that might deviate us so we have to be very careful about this so then how do we balance i'll talk about three examples to illustrate this point of the purpose is what is most important so sometimes we may think that okay this was done in place a and i'll go to place b and i'll do that same thing say but uh it's not just what i am doing so say for example if we you know i organize my room in a particular way mm. then whether i am in india or in america i'll organize my room in that way okay but what if my room is different i have a lot of space in some place i don't have enough space in some place i have racks in one place i don't have racks in another place then the way i organize may have to be adjusted according to the logistics of the place now now here the the logistics of the place are simply a passive place holder hmm? but what if i'm gardening 
so if you are transplanting a fruit bearing or a flower bearing tree from one part of the world to another part of the world so now can we just do all the same things that we done in one part of the world and uh, things will grow in another part of the world well maybe maybe not maybe a particular kind of soil is there easily available in one part of the world and that soil is not available in another part of the world maybe the weather is too extreme so or other weather is of a particular kind in one part of the world where that flower grows in another part of the world it doesn't grow then what do we do well do we say that this flower will never grow over here or when flowers are transplanted sometimes sometimes some some kind of uh, hybrid has to be done so that the flower grows in that region so the key point is if you if you are gardening and if we wanted to grow something in another part of the world then from what was grown in the original place then we can't simply replicate we can't have simply a recipe that we tick or a to do list a b c d I, I, this was what was done over there this is what i did over here well the, the plant may not grow the plant may dry die even if it grows it may die prematurely so we have to consider what is the purpose the purpose is to ensure that this plant grows and then what do i do for this transplantation sometimes something as i say hybridizing the plant means something within the maybe at the level of the gene some mutation has to happen or some adaptation has to happen so there is something which we change in the plant itself some things we may change in the soil okay maybe i have to get this soil or maybe i have to adjust the soil some things we may need to change in the environment we say what can i change in the environment well we can't change too many things that's why we have the we have something like you know in greenhouses we create eco friendly environments which are friendly for the plant now to what extent do we do that if we want a plant to grow very widely if we want a particular tree shrub plant whatever it is to grow very widely is wherever it is going to grow are we going to create a um, eco safe environment for it is it is that possible practically or do we need to hybridize it so that it grows without needing that external environment well that may depend on you know how much do we want it to grow do we want it to be like a rarity okay we we spend millions of dollars but we created this plant without we we recreated this plant from india in america without even one bit of hybridization okay that would be like a trophy but then if we want that plant to be available at various places then are people going to spend millions of dollars for that or maybe even a little hybridization can make it grow much far, grow much more easily without needing so many external props to support it so the, so the idea is we need to focus on the purpose the purpose is that not just follow a to do list but the purpose is to make sure that the plant grows similarly if you consider an example say if there is a airplane there is a aircraft if there is a airport a take off point for a airplane in say new york and say some indian city is now also de developing an international airport say maybe some not so prominent city like nasik so it's also a big city but relatively speaking it's not that big so now nasik wants to build an airport and they say we'll build an airport just like new york well do you really need that to do that exactly maybe if in nasik the territory is very hilly and in new york the territory is very flat then what do we do do we first go about leveling all the land in the area of the airport and then we build the boat or do we not need to do that are we uh, maybe the airport in nasik can be different from the way the airport is in new york and the point here is not to replicate recreate the entire take off point so if somebody does somebody says we have to level this whole hill to build an airport now leveling a whole hill might take millions and millions of dollars and the funds get exhausted before we even can start the flight so what is the use of that if we have limited resources 
then how best can we use those resources to replicate the takeoff point over here? That is the key question. So replicating the takeoff is more important than recreating the takeoff point. Now, <clears throat> whatever is required for that takeoff, that has to be done. So certain material situations are helpful for a spiritual takeoff. So what material situations? That may vary from place to place. So whatever is essential uh, for the takeoff to happen, that has to be done. Other, other things are not really essential. Things are done in a different way at New York airport. Things are done somewhat different at the Indian airport, which is fine. So, but the important thing is that the airport has to take off. Now, that does not mean that everything is relativized. Certain safety protocols have been followed in any part of the world. Certain amount of keeping records, ways of keeping records, all those have to be followed. Safety norms have to be followed. So we can't just say that, oh, you know, that is done that way over here. This is done this way. Certain things can be adjusted. Certain things can't be adjusted. Another example could be somebody is doing brain surgery. Now, brain surgery is a life and death matter, and it requires a lot of expertise. And uh, there may be clear protocols. Now, do this, do this, do this, do this in this sequence. Well, okay, good. But what if somebody is doing a, has to do a brain surgery on a soldier on a war field? Then they may not have all the facilities. Then, then what do they do? Well, do they say that, no, I can't do this till we take the patient to the hospital. But the patient may die by that time. The, the, the injured soldier or whoever it is, they may die by that time. Then what do you do? Well, maybe then some of the details may have to be skipped. And okay, we don't have this facility. We don't have this facility, but we'll do this. So in some cases, the point, the point is not so much to, so overall, the point is not so much to just follow the protocol or to reject the protocol. The point is to take care of the patient. So we could say, I'll conclude with this example of how liberals and conservatives might approach the same issue. So the conservatives might say that actually, unless we follow all the protocols, the risk is too high. So they may say that, you know, okay, if we do the surgery over here, it's not going to, the risk is too high. So better take the person to the uh, hospital and we'll do the surgery over there so that we can follow all the protocol over there. The liberals might say that, Actually, you know, the, in transporting also the risk is quite high. Not just the time it takes to transport, but also the the jolting and whatever the the mobile the mobility that itself can be hazardous. So now conservatives and liberals both may well be concerned about the same thing. They are both concerned about making sure that the patient is taken care of. But some people, some of them may be, they, some of them may be concerned more that, okay, here we will follow the protocols better, and then that will ensure that the patient is safe. They may say others, may, the, the liberals might be concerned more that, no, oh, here is what, uh, here is what is the need. So let us do that over here. So now, which is to be done? There is no black and white decision. Sometimes, in some cases, it's better to take the patient to the hospital, even if there's some risk, because there's a better chance of being, things being saved, a person being saved over there. So, this, of the surgery being successful. So, so, we can't know in advance which position is the right position. So, reality is complex, and we need to keep our vision on the purpose, and then find out. So, if we consider, so if, we, if I am here and I want to get here. It's a straight line from here to here. So I might say I will just go straight. But what if the road road itself is winding? If I go straight, all that is likely to happen is that I will just end up going off the road. So instead of going off the road, if the road is going sometimes left, I have to go leftward. My purpose is to go straight. But if the road is going leftward, I have to go leftward. If the road is going rightward, I have to go rightward. The point is, I need to get to the destination. So we could say going leftward is being more liberal, going rightward is being more conservative. So we have to see what is the path that can take me from here to there. I have to go there, 
but sometimes going leftward is the way i move forward sometimes going rightward is the way i move forward so the important thing is we focus on the purpose and focus on the purpose then we will be able to find the best way to move forward now when we talk about we it is not just we as an individual we may have to consult our spiritual teachers and major decisions are made not by individual spiritual seekers these are they are made by the prominent spiritual teachers but then when things are to be applied in our lives we all make hundreds of decisions on a daily basis so if we have the broad compass then we can also make those decisions with uh, with uh, with a better with greater resources for making those decisions so the conclusion will be the focus on the purpose not so much on the ways to get to the purpose so as i said sometimes left word sometimes right word the focus is to get there not just to take this path to get there but to get there so if we have that understanding then we will be able to accommodate people and make sure that also people are on the we as well as others are on the progressive spiritual path so i'll summarize i spoke today on this theme of of beyond black and white conceptions of spirituality broadly i talked about three things that is spirituality digital or analog so we may often say this the spiritual and material spiritual consciousness and material consciousness are two distinct things which is true but then also the question comes up we are experiencing the spiritual through the material so then how much am i attracted to the material medium through which i am experiencing the spiritual and how much i am expected to the spiritual uh, spiritual itself so whether it is being uh, singing some kirtans or hearing kirtans being sung with a sweet voice or whether it is you know taking darshan in a urban place or a rural place or whether it is hearing in a very accented voice or a non accented voice so it's so what is spiritual material is not that simple so that there is a content of consciousness and there is the intent what we are experiencing and what why we are experiencing what is it that interests us within that content of what we are experiencing both have to be considered and then i talked about the multi level spirituality the bhagavad gita broadly offers us user friendly user friendly spirituality from your place at your pace access krishna's grace so krishna talks about four levels with respect to spontaneous conscientious both with fixing the mind on krishna and then we have um, also working for krishna and then working for some good cause then i introduce the concept of elevation of consciousness and expansion of consciousness and so krishna consciousness involves both there has to be overall broadening of consciousness and essential journey of krishna consciousness is from self centeredness toward overall spiritual consciousness overall krishna consciousness so the broadening of consciousness so which is more important at what level that we will we discuss that expansion is also important not just elevation and then i discussed there after about adjusting versus compromising that compromising means we change the principles also not just the details adjusting means we understand details not only can be adjusted they may need to be adjusted we talk about the example of language so when the same message is spoken in different languages are various languages in a hierarchy or are they simply horizontal so there could be various levels at which spirituality is accessed and there could be various ways in which spirituality is accessed so we are talking about levels it's hierarchical when it's ways it is not it's simply horizontal it's not hierarchical so what is the detail and what is the principle these are subtle things not so easy to understand them but if you keep the purpose in mind things become relatively easier to understand and i that for the purpose i gave four examples broadly one is we talk about liberals are who uh, those who are concerned about making sure that we change the details that that make spirituality accessible to people conservatives are those who are concerned about making sure that we don't change the principles so both have valid and valuable concerns but when the liberals start changing the changing too many things not just details but also the principles they become relativistic when the conservatives start insisting that not only principles be unchanged but even details be unchanged then they go towards being fanatical so 
how do we balance both of these we know that both have their importance not just the liberals are right not just conservatives are right we have to focus on the right purpose and then find out what is the best way to work so i talk for examples one is transplanting um, a plant from one part of the world to another part of the world so we can't just simply follow a to do list and expect to be successful especially to do list that work in another part of the world we may have to adjust certain things maybe get some more soil get some more protection or maybe hybridize the uh, plant itself then second example was if we want to recreate a if you want to have air transport at air travel at a new part of the world so the point is we don't have we we need a airport over there but we don't need a airport exactly the way it was somewhere else the we don't have to recreate the take off point we have to recreate the take off so what all are adjustable details the specific topography of the airport might be adjustable but certain things are not adjustable non negotiable so how much space we might need or what kind of safety protocols we have to follow so those are things those can't be changed and i discussed also the example of if we are doing brain surgery so should it be done on the spot without adequate facilities should be done by taking the person to the hospital and accepting the risks involved in transportation well these are things which have to be carefully decided so there is no one formula for deciding these things and then so the idea is we want to get to a particular destination the destination might be straight ahead of us but the road might not be straight so we if the road is shifting leftward we shift leftward but make sure that we are going toward that destination the road is shifting rightward we shift rightward but make sure that we keep going toward the destination so that way by focusing on the purpose we can uh, ensure that we don't reduce spirituality simply to a to do list but we go beyond we acknowledge that there are blacks and whites black, there are there are some presence essential consciousness there is spiritual consciousness but rather than reducing everything to black and white we focus on making sure that spirituality is accessible and accessible for people so that they can spiritualize their consciousness thank you very much hare krishna so if we are so if somebody is poor in studying is not so good at not so intellectually inclined or not so educated or whatever they are poor at studying scripture then when we give them assignments Mm. then can they also be provided some solutions so would that be helping them towards spirituality yes mm. there can be various standards in india for example i, I know several temples where uh where depending on say the educational background of people so their initiation tests are adjusted for some people especially you know we don't some people in rural backgrounds who are not very good at literacy their whole initiation test might be simply an oral test there's no written test at all or even the written test might involve for people who are say educated at a particular level there might be a particular level of uh, questions for others it might be slightly different level of questions so our movement is currently evolving mm. Mm. uh so we may create we may be able to create more and more systems for making things accessible to people and uh, how exactly those systems will be created say for example right now we are having classes online this itself is an adapted system so like that we will create more and more systems for people to access so that's something which can be adjusted uh then so is it that so aren't we meant to follow the instruction of the spiritual master and especially if there are multiple spiritual masters with liberal conservative inclinations what do we do and how much do we focus on following the, the uh, desires of the guru and how much our own conceptions inclinations or purpose well again the pleasing the spiritual master 
is not as simple as we think. Now, what do we mean by pleasing? Uh, it is actually fulfilling the purpose of the spiritual master. So Prabhupada was told by his spiritual master, uh, preach in the Western world. Even after Prabhupada started his mission, see Prabhupada started his mission in 1965, he went to the West. Uh, till 1970, we could say Prabhupada spent most of his time in the West. From 1970 onwards to 1977, Prabhupada made India his base. So why? Uh, was Prabhupada not following the spiritual master instruction? Prabhupada was. But he recognized that there is, there is what is to be achieved and how it is to be achieved. So Prabhupada, now we can't know the mind of a spiritual master, uh, of, of an exalted Vaishnava like Srila Prabhupada entirely, but we can get some indications based on what he, uh, what he has told us and by also looking at the broad context. So Prabhupada felt that the spiritual culture was still very much prevalent in India and if he created adequate uh, infrastructure in terms of temples and other things in India, then even his non-Indian devotees would be able to come here and have places to go to and rejuvenate themselves in the dhams. He also inv so he invested significantly in uh, doing things in India. So was that was he disobeying a spiritual master? Obviously not. He was fulfilling the purpose of the spiritual master, but he had his own emphasis. So Prabhupada, during Prabhupada's times, even in his absence, the the movement in the West was going on. Prabhupada was born and brought up in India. And he knew India better than Indian. He knew India far better than his Western disciples, and his Western disciples knew the West in terms of the practicalities much more than he did. So he let his Western disciples handle Western outreach, and he realized that they can't handle India. So he focused himself on India. So if you look at Shri Prabhupada's example itself, Prabhupada followed his spiritual master. What does following spiritual master mean? It means fulfilling the purpose of the spiritual master. And sometimes that purpose can be fulfilled simply by doing exactly what the spiritual master is telling us to do. Sometimes we may have to be independently thoughtful and recognize that for doing that thing, maybe this is not the way to do it. That is the way to do it. So ultimately, we have to be Krishna conscious. And in some cases, you know, doing what, the, doing literally what the, whatever the spiritual master is telling us to do, that is the way to be Krishna conscious. Sometimes it may be that, you know, what the spiritual master is telling us is too difficult for us. Uh, it seems unnatural for us. Then we may have to discuss. Now, we often think of relating with the spiritual master only in terms of getting instructions and following instructions. That's not the only way to relate with the spiritual master. Of course, we want to obey the spiritual master. But we also, we also need to understand ourselves and explain ourselves. We have the example for this in... Dhruva Maharaj discussion with Narad Muni. Narad Muni told Dhruva Maharaj, you know, Narad Muni actually tried to uh, uh, tell him that at multiple levels he convinced him. He said that if you are a child, if you, you are just a child and children, somebody, sometimes somebody makes fun of them, children make jokes, others make jokes about them. So don't take this insult so seriously. Or if you are spiritually evolved, and spiritually evolved people also don't take insults so seriously. Therefore go back. Both ways. Narabhani was told by Dhruva Maharaj politely but firmly. So although what you are saying is true, it doesn't work for me. He's very clear. I can't do this. So give me an instruction that I can apply. And then Narabhani says, okay, okay. If right now you are feeling so dishonored and that feeling of dishonor is so unbearable that you have to do something about it. Just can't tolerate it. Then okay. Then you follow this process of bhakti in this way by which you can get a position more honorable than that of your father. So, so, so rather than thinking of the relationship with the spiritual master as simply one who delivers instructions, but it's more also of interaction. Interaction so that both the spiritual master and the disciple understand and the spiritual disciple also uh, is able to uh, apply spirituality in a way that works for them. So, 
Uh, so that's why it's important that we recognize that ultimately uh, spirituality is not just one zero, doing what we think we should be doing or doing what the spiritual master is telling us to do. It is we who have to live our, we, it is we who have to live our life. Now, Shri Prabhupada or our spiritual master can't be Krishna conscious for us. We have to be Krishna conscious. So they can't live our life for us. We have to live our life for ourselves. So we have to live our life for ourselves means we have to look at what resources we have in terms of time, in terms of our social situations, financial situations, in terms of our psychophysical inclinations. What can we do? So we, if we have this proper analysis, then we'll be able to... Um, we will have to be very careful. So I won't say that there's one answer to this, that there is, but we need to recognize that discussion itself is a part of the tradition. And sometimes there is this overemphasis on the spiritual master alone. The spiritual master alone is not the soul of source of all spiritual instructions. There is a whole tradition and uh, if you see the Ram Mahabharat, it is one of it's the world's biggest poem as far as we know, 110,000 verses. And the Mahabharat doesn't spare even half a verse to inform us who is the spiritual master of the Pandavas. Drona is their martial guru, Dhaumya is their priest. Who is their who is their Diksha guru? Well, the Mahabharat doesn't consider that very important. There are various sages right from Shaunaka to Narada to Vyasa to Markandeya. Many sages meet the Pandavas and Pandavas learn from them. And then it's the Pandavas who apply. They decide what to do. So uh, I'm not saying that we reject the, uh, no, we, we definitely respect the spiritual master and we need to follow the spiritual master. By the same time, Srila Prabhupada has created a tradition. So we can hear from many different teachers and understand what works best for us and apply that. So not everything that in our spiritual life will be in a one zero domain. We certainly don't disobey a direct instruction that has been given to us by the spiritual master. But at the same time, we don't have to reduce everything to the domain of direct instructions only. That means that it is not that everything that the spiritual master has said in every context is an absolute instruction for everyone. So we have to use our own, uh, our intelligence also along with the spiritual master's instruction and then apply things. Mm. So, mm. that would be a broad understanding of the subject. So, there are lots of questions and uh, I'll be able to take maybe one or two more of them. Mm -hmm. So what could be adjusted and what cannot be adjusted? Like some people may say dhoti is something which is, uh, which is, which can be adjusted. And can the verses which we sing in Bengali and Sanskrit, can we just sing the English? Well, I would say specific application is, uh, is something which is, uh, we as a tradition are still negotiating that. And uh, one thing which we can do, mm, so in some ways, mm, if we consider, like uh, if we consider uh, research in neuroscience or psychology, it seems that conservative and liberal are, are mindsets that people innately have. So some people are naturally more conservative so conservative means, you know, they are they. What has worked in the past, they say so much is working right. Why do you need to adjust anything? So they want to focus on what is, uh, in general, the right. If you consider political orientation, the right are considered conservative, the left are liberal. So the right now the right and left are are politicalized terms with lots of meanings. But the way I am using them here is. If we roughly equate right with conservatives, the right 
are concerned about what is right with existing systems there's so much is working right why do you want to fiddle with it the right are concerned with what is right in the existing systems the left are concerned with those who are left behind by the current systems by the existing systems this is not working for them this is not working this is not working so many people are left out what do we do so there is a lot that is working well in the current systems that needs to be appreciated and valued and preserved but the existing systems may not be working for many people and they also need to be connected so both have valid concerns so what can be done ideally speaking is that rather than criticizing anyone else that will happen in any moment and if we are disturbed by seeing liberals and conservatives criticizing each other we need to know that this is how it is in every tradition what to speak of any spiritual tradition even in something as uh, we could say as mundane as language if you consider english language i write so i have read a lot about quite a bit about english so even in english language there are people who are liberals and people who are conservatives what do i mean by that suppose some new word comes up or say new way of phrasing something comes up then is that acceptable is that simply like a street jargon which we don't want to accept or is it something that we start accepting so there is the, the words that are used in, with respect to lang language are called this prescriptive and descriptive prescriptive means the people think that the that the study of language those who make say write dictionaries or those who write books on english what is their purpose that this is how english is spoken that is so that's a prescriptive vision of english this is how you should speak and that speaking is wrong so for example a you know maybe if you read literature from 50 or 100 years ago people would make a big difference of when to use may and when to use can may i do this can i do this so people would correct each other but in today's world maybe that is not that important so with respect to language Uh, there is descriptive means this is how people speak this somebody will say this is the meaning of this word but this is this is the way the meaning is in co common language and what do you do the dictionary is also change but the language requires also prescriptive because if every everybody starts saying that you know this is what the word means to me and that is what the word means to you well how will we have any communication at all if words don't have some fixed meanings but if words don't have flexibility if sorry if the language doesn't have flexibility in certain terms of taking in new words then the language will die out one of the reasons why uh, english has become the world's uh, most widely spoken language now widely spoken is not necessarily in the number of people who speak it but the num the variety of people who speak it also that is because english was uh, was willing to take in words from various languages so there are many words like karma from uh, san from sanskrit or hindi or indian languages there are so many words from other languages so but at the same time if we just reject the idea that there are some some words in english which are standard words so we would not be able to communicate so these are what is to be adjusted what is not to be adjusted that may vary so if we focus on our purpose my purpose is to become krishna conscious and it is to help others to become krishna conscious then we won't get so caught up so uh, i made two points over here one point was that people have innate psychophysical needs we could say psychological orientations their brains work in particular ways so some people will be conservative some people will be liberal and so that is from the individual perspective and then i gave the example of language that the language itself is keeps changing uh, sorry the language itself has a dynamic tension between the prescriptivists and the descriptivists so the key thing is that if liberals can be liberal without criticizing the conservatives and conservatives can be conservative without criticizing the liberals then both can move on you know sometimes we, liberals can become very illiberal about the conservatives well that means they say that the 
if liberals true liberalism truly means that things can be adjusted according to time place circumstance then they should be able to accommodate those who don't want to adjust things also that if there are different ways of doing things then one way of doing things is do it in the traditional way so liberals shouldn't criticize conservatives so much and conservatives also you know they need to recognize that there are different parts of the world there are people with different mentalities and uh, things may be able, different people may do things in different ways so what specifically can and should not be done i think that is a domain which we are still as a moment negotiating and uh, in some ways we are evolving in a particular direction say when shila prabhupada was there most of the movement was uh, a temple based movement now we are not so much of a temple based movement so that itself the demographic changes itself signify certain things that need to be taken into account so this is going to be an ever present tension in our movement and i don't think there are any easy answers to that but um, overall we can focus on the principle that each of us has to move toward krishna and rather than fighting with what is the right fighting over what is the right way to move toward krishna we keep moving toward krishna and eventually uh, prabhupada was sometimes criticized for being too liberal by by some other people in india but now in today's india as compared to the other spiritual leaders or other spiritual movements iskon is often considered quite conservative so 50 60 years ago prabhupada was considered liberal by the broader hindu tradition but the way the world has changed what is called as hinduism today within that iskon is considered to be one of the more conservative wings so things change so we need to focus on what works and keep moving forward accordingly thank you very much shri prabhupad ki jai gaur bhakt vrind ki jai tai gaur premanand shri bhagavad gita ki jai